My name is Howard Turner and I am a Technical Solutions Manager working in the Collaboration and Business Application Business Unit at Cisco. The following presentation and demonstration will provide a brief summary of the Golden Template Automation Process for Paki CCE. This will not be a detailed plan of how to set up and execute the automation process from start to finish. It is aimed at providing you with a summary of the process, some gotchas and a demonstration of the automation process. To start with, I will quickly identify one aspect of the automation process that caused me some pain initially when setting up my lab environment. I will then run through a summary of steps required to get ready for the automation process. I'm not going to run through how to build the virtual machines the templates are based on, however I will highlight some tasks in the VMware environment that you may not be familiar with. Then we'll look at downloading and installing the Golden Template tool. This is the key component to the automation process. We will then look at completing the golden template and executing it to produce a full set of virtual machines ready for configuration. Finally, you will get to run through a hands-on lab at the end of this presentation. First things first, I just wanted to highlight an aspect of the initial ESXi host setup in VMware vCenter. This took me a while to figure out as I was new to the whole process of packing CCE. I had until this point been using domain names for each of my registered ESXi hosts as vCenter allows you to use both domain names as well as IP addresses to register each host. However, the package CC scripts are not designed to determine, validate and execute against domain names. Instead, you will need to ensure that when you do register your customers' hosts into your vCenter that you use IP addresses instead. Once your VMware infrastructure devices are set up, you need to start the process of preparing for the automation process. Above all, the biggest piece of advice I can provide is to read the installation and configuration guide a few times before you start anything. Its intents and detail can easily be missed, especially during the virtual machine template creation. The first two chapters cover the components and prerequisites of packet CCE. The first tasks you will need to complete is the racking, cabling and upgrading of the firmware for the UCS C260M2 hardware before defining the three RAID logical disks required. Next you will need to install the VMware ESXi host software on both servers and register these within the vCenter. Cisco generally expects that our partners will be staging these servers in their internal labs before shipping to the customer, however this may not always be the case. The Virtualization Lab will cover some tools and tricks of the trade to make the deployment of packet CCE and unified CCE much easier. Once the hardware and VMware infrastructure is in place, your focus will then shift to getting ready for the automation process. You will require a number of other products in hand as listed in the prerequisites chapter of the ins installation guide, however for the automation process you will need to download the following software, the Golden Template Tool, VMware Power CLI 32-bit and WinImage 8.5. As with the other software prerequisites, this software and links to download the software are detailed in the prerequisites chapter. Once all of the prerequisites are in place, you will then need to build the reference virtual machines. For Core Package CCE, you will need seven templates. Depending on the customer requirements, you may also need to manually deploy a further VM for CVP reporting. Additional VMs may be required if multimedia or any of the other optional components are also required. Please note, and I cannot stress this enough, that you should read through the installation guide several times before attempting to build the template machines. As these are intended to be the baseline machines for a number of customer deployments, if anything is incorrectly configured, then all customer instances on packet CCE deployed using these templates will also be incorrectly configured. Next you will need to convert those VMs into templates ready for the automation process. This is a simple process so let me quickly show you. First we open up the vCenter console. We need to highlight the VM that we wish to convert then drop down to the template menu and just select the convert to template. You'll be able to see in the lower uh, task bar to see that the process, the task is now in, in progress. 
And once that completes, then obviously the, the VM is completed the conversion to a template. After you've successfully installed the VMware Power CLI, you will need to check and may need to modify the script execution policy on the server. OK, so once you have the templates successfully created, you need to download and install the automation scripts. Let's quickly run through this process. OK, so first we need to go to CCO to download the software. Now once the software is downloaded, we will then obviously need to proceed to install it. Now once you've downloaded the golden template tool zip file, you just need to simply unzip that into the root of C and that will generate the appropriate folder structure necessary for the golden template tool. Once you've done that, quickly just check to make sure that that has installed correctly and then we should be good to go. So now you have everything ready for automation. Let's configure the golden template Excel file and execute this in the VMware Power CLI environment. So let's take a look at the golden template Excel spreadsheet. Here's the default that comes with the tool when you install it. Um, as you can see, there are uh, entries for every single VM required for both side A and side B. Um, listed here both for the Windows 2008 and Linux machines. Um, all the fields are, are quite self-explanatory and again they, we do go into detail and explain each field um, within the documentation. Um, you also note here that you can see there's a call out uh, for each field that gives you an indication of whether the field is required or optional plus the information that's required to populate this field. Um, it does vary. Um, one thing to note as well is that for the names um, we don't support spaces or special characters. Um, um, included in that but not specifically called out is uh, the uh, any requirements to include a path to a golden template uh, location. Um, you may well have your templates located in a subfolder within the data store Currently that's not yet supported, so they'll have to be in the root of the data store. Um, as I mentioned, um, each field is called out as required or optional. However, um, there are only the, um, the DNS alternate NIC 1 and DNS alternate NIC 2 are the only ones that are currently optional. Every other field for every other virtual machine that needs to be re uh, installed is actually required. Um, one thing to note, um, uh, just as a, as a I, I guess something for everybody out there who's um, dealing with Microsoft, um, not every customer will want to provide you with their product keys. So um, one workaround that um, me and my colleagues have used here is to uh, to utilize the uh, the temporary uh, keys that Microsoft publish on their website um, to populate these fields and then obviously once the VMs are created then you need to work with the customer to have them changed to the customer specific product keys for, for the Microsoft Windows 2008 server. So let's take a look at one I've pre-configured as you can see here, um, everything is configured. Um, I'm going to be running through the demonstration and uh, configuring all 16 um, virtual machines. <coughs> uh, everything is currently located on my 10.51.9.211 source um, with the ESX1-DS sorted data source. You can see everything has now been pre-configured and is ready to be executed. Um, the next step really is, 
to uh, call the deploy scripts and provide it with the necessary information, uh, the Excel spreadsheet, um, vCenter IP address or host name, and login name and password. You can use um, the tab to move between folders if you weren't already aware. And we're going to send this one to ten fifty one dot nine dot two two two. Name is administrator, password is Wombat. So it's going to go through a number of checks to validate the data is accurate before it will then commence creating the images. So there you go, all the data provided has been validated. It's now checking to see if the data store has any uh, is available free space to deploy these VMs into. As you can see now it's now creating each of the VMs. Okay, so that's it from me.